بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. We had discussed uh, the journey of Isra and Mi'raj. Two theological questions. Firstly, did the Prophet see his Lord? Did the Prophet see Allah Jalla Jalaluhu? We have narrations from some of the Sahaba where there seems to have been some slight difference of opinion. It is narrated from Ibn Abbas in one riwayah that he said, he saw his Lord. Qad ra'ahu. And from Aisha in Sahih Bukhari, the Prophet says, uh, sorry, Aisha says, this hadith is in Bukhari. Aisha said, Man haddathaka anna Muhammadan sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ra'a rabbahu faqad a'zama ala Allahi al-firya. Whoever says that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has seen his Lord has said a huge lie, a massive lie against Allah. Because Allah says in the Quran, La tudrikuhu al-abusar. Eyes cannot encompass him. Eyes cannot encompass him. So Aisha said this and Masruq, who is one of the students of the Sahaba, was sitting there. And so Masruq sitting behind the curtain, because Aisha never appeared publicly. Aisha never appeared publicly. She appeared behind the curtain or the hijab. Allah says in the Quran about the wives of the Prophet that if you're going to speak to them for anything, speak from behind a hijab. And this hijab was a hijab above and beyond what normal women have to wear. This hijab was a hijab that physically separated them from men. So the regular hijab, we all know what it is, right? But this was a level of hijab that they could not even see the uh, the, the figure of the, 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 the mother of the believers. She has to be behind an actual curtain. Uh, and even when she went outside Aisha, she would have an actual curtain, a hawdaj, that she would put on her camel. So here in her house, she's teaching, there's a physical curtain. So Masruq is behind the curtain. And he was uh, listening with his back on the wall. And when Aisha said this, Masruq is narrating, he said, I stood up, meaning I, I went forward. And I said, Ya Ummah, my mother, allow me to ask something and don't get angry at me. Allow me to ask something and don't get angry. This hadith is in Sahih Muslim. Masruq says, didn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say in the Quran, وَلَقَدْ رَآهُ بِالْأُفُقِ الْمُبِينَ وَلَقَدْ رَآهُ نَزْلَةً أُخْرَى and وَلَقَدْ رَآهُ بِالْأُفُقِ الْمُبِينَ So he quotes two ayahs in the Quran which says and he saw him in the highest place and he saw him uh, and uh, فَكَانَ قَابَ قَوْسَيْنِ أَوْ أَدْنَى He was closer than two bows lengths. So Aisha responds back Subhanallah My hair is standing on end because of what you're saying. In other words, I'm trembling. How dare you say that he saw Allah? I was the first person to ever ask the Prophet about these verses. Aisha saying, I was the first person to ask the Prophet about these verses. That is Jibreel. The reference is to Jibreel. وَلَقَدْ رَآهُ نَزْلَةً أُخْرَى وَلَقَدْ رَآهُ بِالْأُفْقِ الْمُبِينَ فَكَانَ قَابَ قَوْسَيْنِ أَوْ أَدْنَى All of these references are to Jibreel, not to Allah Jalla Jalaluhu, and then she said to Masruq, have you not read in the Quran that Allah says in the Quran that لا تدركه الأبصار لا تدركه الأبصار وهو يدرك الأبصار Eyes cannot encompass him and he encompasses all eyes. It's a beautiful verse. لا تدركه الأبصار وهو يدرك الأبصار Eyes cannot encompass him but he knows what your eyes are seeing. And he can encompass your eyes. And have you not read in the Quran, وَمَا كَانَ لِبَشْرٍ يُكَلِّمَ اللَّهُ إِلَّا وَحْيًا أَوْ مِنْ وَرَاءَ حِجَابٍ أَوْ يُسِرَ رَسُولًا That Allah says in the Quran, it is not permissible, it is not allowed for any man to speak to Allah except it be through inspiration. Or from behind a curtain. Or an angel comes and communicates. So Allah says three things. Either I inspire directly into his heart, or he speaks from behind a curtain, or an angel comes and speaks to him. So notice here, beautiful here, that Aisha clearly knows her stuff. Aisha is quoting verses left and right. Masruq thinks she's out, he's outwitted Aisha. He's like, come on, doesn't the Quran say he saw him? He saw him, right? وَلَقَدْ رَآهُ He saw him. So Masruq is saying, I've read the Quran, it clearly says he saw him. Aisha is saying, been there, done that, I've talked to him directly. 
I know exactly what these verses refer to. And they refer to Jibreel and not to Allah. And they cannot refer to Allah because Allah says, لا تدركوا الأبصار Eyes cannot encompass him. And Allah says, No man can speak to Allah except from behind a curtain. And this is clearly proven in a hadith in a Sahih Muslim that Abu Dhar al-Ghifari radiallahu ta'ala an asked him directly and this hadith in Sahih Muslim Ya Rasulallah hal ra'ayta rabbak You cannot get more explicit. Did you see your Lord? Did you see your Lord? And the Prophet responded Noorun anna arahu Noorun anna arahu There was light. How could I see him? There was light. How could I see him? And the scholars have said, the meaning here is, there was the light of Allah's hijab. There was the light of Allah's hijab. Because another hadith of Sahih Muslim says, Hijabuhun nur. Hijabuhun nur. Allah has a hijab of nur. Allah has a hijab of nur. Law kashafahu. If Allah were to lift this veil, then the rays that come from His face, Subuhat Wajhihi, Subuhat means the rays, literally, Subuhat of the Shams, is Subuhat means the rays. The rays that come from His face would destroy everything that it sees, which means everything, because Allah sees everything, right? So, from this, the scholars have said that. Allah Azza wa Jal, He is of course a type and in His own we, we affirm the language and we don't affirm how. Allah says He is Nurus Samawati Wal Ard. So Allah is Nur and Allah's guidance is Nur and Allah has created the Nur. All of this is the meaning of Allah Nurus Samawati Wal Ard. Allah is Nur and we affirm Allah is Nur. How He is in Nur we don't think. Our mind should not think. Just like we say Allah is living but we don't think how. Allah is hearing but we don't think how. Allah is seeing but we don't think how. Every name or attribute we affirm it but we don't. We shouldn't think how. We know the Arabic meaning. We we don't think how. It's not part of our what Allah has told us to do. So Allah has said He is Nur. And that Nur is so powerful, the Prophet is saying, that it would have destroyed the whole creation. And this is proven in the Quran itself, in the story of Musa. Right? In the story of Musa. That Musa says, قَالَ رَبِّ أَنِنِي أَنظُ إِلَيْكَ And Allah says, قَالَ لَن تَرَانِي وَلَكِنْ أَنظُرِ إِلَى الْجَبَلِ فَإِنْ إِسْتَقَرَّ مَكَانَهُ فَسَوْفَ تَرَانِي فَلَمَّا تَجَلَّى رَبُّهُ لِلْجَبَلِ Allah Azza wa Jal lifted that veil between him and the mountain. And what happened? The Jabal collapsed. It couldn't. It couldn't. This is what's going to happen when the veil is lifted up. No creation can withstand this in this dunya. And that's why Allah says, لا تدركه الأبصار That eyes cannot encompass, eyes cannot encompass Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, in this hadith therefore, the Prophet is saying, in order to protect the creation from His magnificence, Allah has taken a veil. And the veil in our dunya is always a veil of darkness and cover. But in Allah azza wa jal's case, the veil itself becomes created light. The veil is light, whereas for us a veil is always covering, and it's always a darkness. You cover it up, right? But in the case of Allah, fi haqqillahi azza wa jal, the hijab itself becomes nur. And so when Abu Dhar said, did you see your Lord? The response, there was light, how could I see him? And that is the light of the nur of the hijab of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this also clearly shows back to our uh, talk last Wednesday that the Prophet ﷺ went to a place that no other being had gone because he saw the hijab of Allah. He saw the hijab of Allah, so he said, there was light, how could I see him? Now if somebody were to ask, how then will the creation see Allah in the next world? The response is that next world is not a world of physical bodies that we have now. It is a different world. That next world, the resurrection will be a perfect resurrection. And it will be a resurrection of eternity. And it is not going to be of the type of flesh that we have now. It is going to be its own type of uh, existence that only Allah knows about. And in that existence, and in only in that existence, we will be able to see Allah Jalla Jalaluhu. Otherwise, in this world, this seeing is completely impossible. It's not even possible. No one has seen Allah in this world. 
of this creation, no one has seen Allah, nor could they see Allah. And therefore, Ibn Abbas' statement, he saw him, can be interpreted that either this was a mistake from his part, uh, and, and Aisha is more knowledgeable than him because she asked directly, and Abu Dhar asked directly, or it could be that, uh, and there's one version that supports this, Ibn Abbas said he saw him with his heart, Ra'ahu biqalbihi. And this is a different type of ru'ya. It's not the ru'ya of the eyes. So if Ibn Abbas affirmed this, then it doesn't contradict the fact that nobody has seen Allah Azza wa Jal with, uh, with the eyes.